That's like walking into a classroom. Look, I'm just going to walk into this classroom. What could possibly go wrong? That, oh, we should weave that in. And what? And the other thing, so the two most important sayings in your teaching career are what could possibly go wrong with a, with a tongue-in-cheek, but the other one, which is serious, is what's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? Here's the, the best question that will get you through any kind of career or life. What's the worst thing that can happen? And in the vast majority of situations, it's not that bad, <laughs> yeah. right? That rem- reminds me of Monty Python and the Black Knight. <laughs> King Arthur cuts his arm off and says... Yeah, come back, I'll bite you to death. The, the, fi- the fight is mine. No, it's not. <laughs> I've just cut your arm off. Well, it could be worse. <laughs> Now, Richard, some people, some pre-service teachers or some teachers in general might just have some kind of a resistance to what we were just talking about yeah, in yeah. terms of the controlling versus the more relaxed approach. And we did say that it comes with time and we did say that it's often something that's developed over years. Yep. But I suspect that there might be some teachers who say, yeah, but what about that class? Or uh, what about those classes? What do you say to that? Well, the fact is there is a catch-22 the classes who are kind of out of control need that grounded, calm uh, teacher who can roll with the punches more than anyone. And yet they're the yeah. ones that get the highly controlling, boring, yeah. goddamn boring, you know, barking at them, speaking down to them type of teacher. It's a catch-22 and it's tough. Amen, brother. Because the, the tough classes, the ones that are hard to control, they kind of need the relaxed teacher more than anything. And yet you fall into the default of, even if you want to be that relaxed person, it's not happening, so you snap and suddenly you're back into controlling the teacher again. And and that is, that is uh, something that more experienced teachers deal with, right? As a beginning teacher, I would say that um, it's, it's a big ask to expect or to hope that you're going to suddenly be that relaxed person i mean you do need to get your house in order first and you and you, the first step you've got to know your content if you, if you if you're shaking on the content the kid's going to pick that up and then you've got no hope no no it's true so <laughs> well, yes so that's really important and and then you, 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 your lesson planning is really really important or the your lesson structure you know, um, you know, think about the transitions that are going to happen in the lesson. You, you know, you need to kind of do it step by step, work work it through in your head first. All that stuff's really important. And so it's difficult to then, you know, be Mr. Cool and Mr. Relax while that at, at straight up. So it is, a, it is a journey. I mean, I took I took years to get this. Well, actually not. I was a PE, I was a PE and a maths teacher in the beginning. So in my second year of teaching, I was having a great time in, in PE, but my first year was horrific. Um, and in, in, in a mass, it took me a long while to become the relaxed person with with the classes mm. that, who aren't on my team. So the, the the trick is, well, the question is, how do I how do I shift this class into being on my team? How can we be on the same team? Mm. Because once you're on the same team, then you can be that sort of Mr. Relaxed person. But by being that super controlling person is not necessarily the best way to get that that class on your team. So, so the, thinking about the uh, there's no magic bullet. Think- yeah, no magic bullet. Thinking about the team genre then, I can recall a time when in the very early years of my teaching, I think only two or three years in, I was given a, 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 year, in, a year 11 class, mm-hmm. uh, a year 11 industrial technology class, so a, an industrial environment, tools, machines, and so forth. And the, it was an all-boys class, and they were a good bunch of guys. Right? Yep. They, were, they were a good bunch of guys, but they were, well, they were a bit rowdy, <laughs> but they weren't nasty rowdy, but they were rowdy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and they were you would describe them as a bit of a handful. And to come back to the uh, to the team language, I was very very fortunate that in the faculty that I was in, we had what you might call a super coach, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Right. And the super, and what happened was every time I'd go down to the class, they'd be waiting outside, and there'd be you know because the door was locked, and there'd be this kerfuffle, and there'd be you know there'd be noise and everything, and and, and I'd open the door, and then I'd be focused very hard on getting the lesson started. I've got to get this lesson started. And then I'd, you know, I'd struggle through the lesson because that energy that was outside the room would come into the room and then continue throughout the lesson. 
Now, they weren't being naughty. They weren't being mm. nasty. They weren't vandalizing things. They, they were just being boys, mm. but they needed guidance, right? And so the super coach comes up to me one day and says very quietly, very calmly, you know, he didn't pull me aside and reprimand me, but he just pulls me aside and says, let me just tell you something about the vibe of the classroom. Is that the kind of vibe that you want to have in your room? No, 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 I definitely don't. I'm trying really hard to manage it. And he goes, well, why don't you just make really clear to the boys that the vibe that you want is not the vibe that's there. So just let them wait outside for a while with you until they start to realize your vibe. And I thought, oh, okay. And he goes, so he says, it means you're going to have to be a little bit more ordered and a little bit more structured before you start. So you might have to line them up and just let them calm down. Mm. And then just talk to them. Just talk to them calmly and talk to them in that calm, ordered, structured environment. Sure, they're lined up. Okay, that might sound a little bit old school, but just try it. And I thought, oh, gee, oh, I've got to try really hard. I've got to try it. And I thought, hang on a second. Maybe I just need to take that advice from the super coach and be a little bit jujitsu like and just flow with the mm. energy instead of trying to stop the yeah. balls with my bare hand. I could just do a, a matrix move and just sort of See. swish to the side. <clears throat> and guess what? It started to work. It took time. It took time and perseverance. See, but the students, they slowly picked it up. Another thing that was happening before you made that shift there, I, I bet, those kids are reading you without even knowing it. This teacher is in fear. Uh, it's almost like you're, you're create, you're the fear, you have a fear of the situation being exactly what it is. And it's almost like that somehow helps to create the very situation you don't want. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's, a, so, it's, it's an energy thing. So I think the I think the takeaway here is, and and particularly for pre-service teachers who are going into perhaps prac environments that are just diabolically energetic. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, I think what they need to understand is this is a moment in time for them, and they don't have the time. They don't have the length of time to be able to invest in a strategy like this because they're only going to be there for a few weeks. Mm. But perhaps what they could do is they could know that strategies like this work mm. with you know with a longer duration and just use this as an opportunity to see just how poorly things can run when that legacy hasn't been hasn't um what's the word i'm looking for uh pre-existed them yeah, 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 yeah. so they've walked into a situation where that hasn't been around and so they can see the outworking of that situation but look i think it is a fair reaction so people who are in Genuinely difficult situations. Yeah. I mean, really difficult situations. Mm. They will listen to this and think, "You guys are kidding, right? <laughs> you want me to you want me to rethink my my approach so that I can start to you know r relate to the students, be a little bit more relaxed." And, well, we're not suggesting, as you said, th this is not a magic bullet. This is a philosophy. This takes a long time mm. to develop and a lot of investment. It doesn't have to take as long as it took me though. Well, 20 years. <laughs> Was it 20 years? For, well, in, for the really big shift, I think, came about, yeah, about 20 years in. And that, that's with, with, with tough classes. Um, but here's the thing. Think about, uh, am I reacting to the situation or am I responding? Because if you're reacting, then you're sunk. And most beginning teachers and probably a lot of teachers are reacting a lot of the time. And you've got to move out of that. So when something happens, you respond to it. Okay, what's what's what response can I give that's going to bring out the best outcome? I don't want this to escalate. And it's and it's often you you, you can't help but but sort of fall back into some a more grounded approach. It's not a snappy mm -hmm. thing. It's not jumping on top of them. Blah blah blah. It's a much you know. Um, so that's that's a good question to start with. And there are other benefits, and, and we'll finish with this because I've got an example here, but I also want to hear more about the example you were talking about previously. And that is that after I'd tried this with that class and communicated with the super coach after, well, after he had pulled me aside, mm. and I'm so thankful that he did, yeah. what I found that was things changed for me enormously on a collegial level because I realized that I'd opened the door to... Uh, experienced insight mm. to, to impact my life. A little bit like Luke Skywalker going back to the Dagobah system to land his X-Wing in the swamp and go and find Yoda. Um, you know, instead of joining the fight again, no, no, I've got to go and self-reflect and hang out in the swamp. 
uh, I found that on a collegial level, I was able to communicate much more professionally with that other person and gain even more insight. Mm. Coming back to the example that you gave in our previous discussion about walking past that class mm. where you saw that calm teacher handling that situation, did that have an impact on how you then continued to relate to that particular teacher? No. <laughs> I, uh, no, other than the fact that we, we talked about that a bit. Um, but that was much, but you're talking about, you're talking about being very early in your career. I'm talking about being very late in my career. That happened a lot, oh, okay. much so later on. So I think that's the difference. Two different, sta two different stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember in my first or set, my first year, I, I was in a, there was my, um, I, I taught at Clare High School right, in South Australia. And um, the guy I was sharing a house with and this other maths teacher and myself were in a discussion while I was really just listening. And I remember this guy said, our oh, teaching's really all about charisma. And you know, I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I mean, I was, I was a pretty, you know, I didn't know a lot about a lot of things back then, but, but I honestly had no idea what he was talking about. But what he was talking about is what I articulated before, which is, it might've been in the previous video. It's about finding a way finding a part of your personality that you're happy, okay, this is me, this is an authentic me, and it's my teaching persona. The teaching persona is not a different person. And and that, that takes a while to get, and I don't think you get that in your first, very few people get that in their first year of teaching, and it's and you don't suddenly get it. It's It takes, it ta it's a, it's a uh, continuum. But that's another good thing to think about, you know. But look, I, I think, look, in, as a first, in a teaching prac or in a, as a first year teacher, you just have to find your own way. And if that means you're going to be highly controlling for a bit and not not smile a bit, that's if that works for you, then do it. But but know that ultimately you want to be much more yourself and more relaxed and be able to like call the shots and say, right, class, quiet. George, what do I say? <laughs> yeah, you know? that's right. And then and then and then move on. You don't have to be snapping at the, at the kids. So the calm, authentic you as a teacher might not happen overnight, but it will happen if you start to think about it. Richard, Absolutely. thank you so much. Cheers.